How's it going everybody? This is gonna be a continuation of like yesterday's video where me and Skinny Boston ranked the leaders and talked about our experience with them, talents, all that kind of stuff. So now we're gonna head on over to the Alliance Minis and we're gonna do this for all the sections. So hope you enjoy this information. I hope it helps you in your Warcraft Rumble adventures and you can look forward to daily uploads from now on because uh, I've learned a lot more about the game now and I, I've been having a lot of fun with it. All right, so as we discussed, we're here. We're going to be ranking our Alliance Minis. And we already got the leader's position from the first video we did when we ranked the uh, the leaders. So we got Tyrion in S tier. We got Jaina in B tier. And we got Maiev in C tier. Now, although we are ranking the Alliance members, this doesn't mean when you get an Alliance leader, you have to slam every single piece and be an Alliance piece. In fact, that's rarely going to be what you do. What I would say is that every leader is going to have two places for alliance characters that's from the dungeon and you can pick a third if that's how you fit i think my jaina has three uh, three pieces for alliance which works out good for her because there's three spells that happen to be alliance uh but let's get right into it okay so blizzard listen listen blizzard's <laughs> the best spell in the game right like bl yeah it's crazy it's crazy yeah. it is it is, i think i think it is i really do man the the other for the cost that it costs and the amount of turnaround you're able to do on a four cost spell, it's insane. You could very easily get your value back. And that's before you even put any talents on that thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the talents, I got caught today. I didn't know it was a straight stun. The cold snap frees enemy troops in place. I had this like monster wave coming at the enemy. I had Tyrion. I had my foot soldiers. I had two uh shaman healers in behind and i had who else did i have it was another big boy i forget but the enemy this is in pvp he dropped a cold snap blizzard on me held me in spot and then he had this one range unit just tee off on me because blizzard lasts a long time it mm -hmm. does a crap ton of damage and now yep. it's basically a stun if you have range characters coming at you and you're stuck with a melee wave um I think I think the best spell in the game. I'm comfortable doing S tier on this bad boy. What do you think? I I'm 100 percent an S tier review, and yeah, I I don't I think, yeah, I don't think there's any questions. Best spell in the game, you know, and that's saying a lot because there's some really good spells in this game. Yeah, I agreed. Uh, speaking of one that's got its niche niche uses, we got Arcane Torrent. So Arcane Torrent for me, it's it's okay. Look, it starts at one, and every time you use it, it's gonna go up by one uh i think it doubles the damage but like the first time you use it it doesn't do anything and then you're kind of stuck with it in your deck which can actually be a hindrance at times now if you're using like blood talon thalos or whatever his name is uh it's good because it'll stack blood levels mate. up. blood mage thank you <laughs> thank you uh so if you're using him like it's it could definitely power him up quickly otherwise though i don't find the the damage very useful like if you're trying to take out some chickens it could be good there uh, once you use it two, three times, now you've racked up a huge gold cost, right? So you've then, at that right. point, used six gold. And I just find it tickles. Even if I have it built up, even if I have it in a gold slot in Jaina's deck, it's just not doing it for me. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. like I said, I, I run it in my blood my blood deck, my blood, blood mage Thanos deck. Um, and it's just... It is like my final blow, or it's a cycle for me, so I can easily get a level on him. And I, I do think that's its niche use, sadly, you know, because it is, you know, the damage on your base levels not doing a ton. You're killing chickens, spiders, that's it, really. You know, like, like there's not many other things that first one's going to hit on and kill for you. Mm -hmm. And after that, you know, like you said, the gold cost continues to climb, the climb. And at that point, you know, if you're casting it three times, I'd much rather just put a play a blizzard. You know, okay. and and I'm I'm saving, I'm saving what two dollars? You know, I'm saving two gold on that cost for that as well. You know, and it's nice. It AOE, it pops. You know, right away. But yeah, I definitely think it's a niche use spell. And for for that fact, you know, I think C tier just because it does have a use, but it's it's really got one use. So it's a one trick pony. Yeah, I'm good with C tier. I'd also like to mention the talents on it are kind of subpar. Like subsequential mm -hmm. tasks increase the radius cool spell sequence starts at rank three and ends at rank four okay but now it, the starting cost is three and then four that's seven gold and it's kind of yeah. just okay and then torrent gain a level after casting rank four all right cool now i can cost it for five gold like 
<laughs> it's a little much. It's a little. It's a little much for me. <laughs> I agreed. I agreed a hundred percent. Then we got a very interesting spell. A spell, I think, the healing spell, Holy Nova. It's got some use for sure. You were talking about a little bit of use earlier. I I actually like having it with uh, Tyrion sometimes, though. I, I 100% run better. it with Tyrion. You do? Yeah. Okay, I was I, for a while. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just, they put that extra heal down on there because that whole thing is, you know, you build that army and you cluster in. Mm -hmm. So I think I think 100% Holy Nova is, is a must because it's a healing spell. You know, how can you not have that? And you're building a healing-based deck. You know, but again, outside of Tyrion, outside of Blood Mage, again, you know, it's kind of, it's a little niche. Mm -hmm. It can do a good heal, you know, I, I actually, it's a good amount of damage too on it, you know, but again, it, it's, it's a, it's not as niche as the Arcane, but I do think it still kind of falls in that niche use again, you know, like, I think another place I use it is, um... No, actually, those are actually the two places I use it. <laughs> I think about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the talents on this one, a very big step up from the Arcane Torrent, but not up to the level of Blizzard. So, like, increase your armor resistance by f uh, for five seconds. That's nice. Uh, puts a heal over time on allies. That could be really good, like you yeah. said, in a big cluster. And then effects are doubled on all elemental minis, so heal and damage. It's not bad, but like you said, very niche use. I think it's definitely a step up from Arcane Torrent. I'm kind of happy agree. putting this one in B tier. Yeah, I, I think like, B tier is the perfect spot for it as well. All right, right on. All right, moving on to what I think is literally the best mini in the game is the safe pilot. Now, this is an unbound unit that does really, really, really good damage. I use mm. her everywhere in PvE. I use her in PvP. She's literally in every single one of my decks because of her damage. Um, amazing talents as well. She can do a polymorph to first blaster target. I think that's subpar. She can deploy twice as fast and burn nearby enemies. I think this is now the better PvP tournament uh, talent since the nerf to stealth. Uh, but this is the PvE outlier. The Gnomish cloaking device. Deploy from the explosion with stealth and ambush. So she's getting increased damage. She pops off. She hits AoE. She's got 8.5 range. She's got really high damage stat. I love this character. What's your experience with the safe pilot? Absolute monster. I agree. When you come in, you're doing an AoE damage that's stronger than Holy Nova, I believe, as far as on the damage side. Like, I've seen that thing eat units by itself. Then you pop off with an AoE base attack as well. If you got the safe, if you got the ambush on there. Even without the ambush, you usually can pop off one shot. You know, so with the ambush, you're popping two shots, maybe three, depending on how you're playing her. You yep. know, like, she's a great back line. She's a great front line. I mean, like you said, you could just deny every one of your decks for a reason. You know, I, I think I might be a little biased here, but I do think, you know, she's another S tier character. And I think the alliance, it speaks to how strong this alliance deck is. That the fact, we, you know, we're this far in and we're already at two S tiers on this list. Yeah, no, I 100% I agree. I have her in every single deck for a reason. If somebody asks me, like, what's a mini that you recommend, I, I anytime I see it in a tome, buy it. Anytime I see it in the store for an extra star upgrade, get it with your gold. Anytime I see it from a quest, put it in her, get her up to, like, level 20, and she's one-shotting, like, enemy leaders like Rend. She'll take him off the dragon right away. Done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. S-tier for me all day. Every day. Uh, that brings us 100%. to the Worgen. <laughs> Listen, Worgen's, he's fine, okay? He's all right. He's hes also unbound. He comes in hot. He gets ambushed. Uh, he's got some interesting talents, nothing too, too crazy. Um, but I find him squishy. I find the damage pretty lackluster. I did build him up quite a bit. I do think he's got really cool use. The Lone Wolf on deploy grant one gold if no allies are nearby. This actually works with Sneed, which I thought was very interesting. Um, just another way, if you wanted with Sneed, you could throw this guy at a chest. He'll open the chest. He's not a siege unit, so he's not actually going to get uh, the extra gold for Sneed that way. But then he does give you one gold. So it kind of helps you kind of steal an enemy's chest. Um, other yep. than that... I yeah. I, I think he's probably I think he's probably the best plug and play unbound unit though. I really do. Just because of the ambush, because of the fact that you're gonna steal chests of him. I think he's the most consistent stealth excuse me, most consistent chest stealing mini in the game. 
with that unbound with the stealth i think you could easily throw him out there the units will walk by not notice he's there grab that chest he'll pop it in one shot he can kill most units 1v1 i do believe you know like i said i'm not i haven't pushed super deep into the levels on him yet but for for i do think as an unbound unit i as far as your snagging chest in pve I think he's the best because he's not good. He doesn't have any deploy time. He's not getting pre walked up on or anything like that because of that stealth unit. I don't know. You know, like I said, as we, th as I think of other unbounds, short of safe pilot, of course, you know, I think is, as far as someone that's just there to steal a chest at a, at a possible two cost, and then you grab the chest, you get them for free and you deny the gold. I think that's huge. I really do. I, I'll agree with you that that denying the gold definitely huge, and if you can make him cheaper, it's good. I the problem is when he runs up on a tank, he's just gone. Oh yeah, no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he that's runs it, up on you a know, tank, and he's gone. exactly. And that's the thing, you know. Yeah, like he's not he's not killing a great unit by any means, you know. But a lot of times in PVE, I see it when they're going to get a chest, they put like one medium tier you know kind of crappy unit out usually to get it every once in a while they send a horde but if you're on it and you're watching that chest as soon as it pops you're you're counting okay the chest is about to pop you know you're watching the clock you know the time is about to come up you pre-drop him he's good he's gonna one pop the chest and, and that's it you know and and that alone i think is is worth him being at least b tier i think i i'm good with b tier i'm very good with yeah. b tier because of that no deploy that chest snag and because, mm -hmm. let's be honest, in some of the PvE matches, when you're down to the wire, you'll be happy to have two, three unbounds when you're getting that double gold in that final minute. And you're just like, yo, this boss got to go. Bang, 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 bang. You're happy to have it. So I'm good with putting it on B tier too. Uh, I'm going to put it over Holy Nova. Uh, as I far agree, as yeah. I 100%. All right, all right. Next, we got the, uh, the foot soldiers. Look, I hated these guys. Until I put them with Tyrion. <laughs> when I when I got the Tyrion train, I was all about it. So we're getting, I think it's four units. They can do stuns. They can gain extra health, which uh, Tyrion will then fill up. Their armor increases 75% if they are the last one standing. Never get last stand. You don't, don't, don't get last stand. You want shield bash or fortification, but I think shield bash takes the cake. Uh, yeah, I think she, yeah, this, the stun's too good. Yeah, agreed. They don't do any damage. They're slow, but this is the army battalion. This, with Tyrion and with the Orc Shaman, you have like an unkillable wave that will crush a lot of things in PvE. They do cost five, though. How are you feeling about the Footmen? The Footmen, I will say, can, you know, because you got to think, you got to hold them against other tanks. You know, we there's a, there's a special class of tanks in this game that cost two, and there's two units... And they're phenomenal. Outside of that, all your other tanks are going to be four, five, and six cost. Yeah. You know, and with with a five cost, with a stun, there's four of them you put out. You know, I think their only weakness compared to the other tanks is because there's so many of them. So something that does AOE is you're just going to eat them alive. You know, and yeah. so something like that. You know, so unit we'll talk about later. You know, I definitely think is a kryptonite to them, but. You know, there's only a handful of those I can think of in the game. You know, so if we're looking at an alliance, we're looking at tanks in an alliance, I definitely think they're the, the, they're, they're the best tank, other than Tyrion himself. I think they're one of the best tanks you can choose from in in the deck, you know. And, I, yeah, I don't, you know, like I said, I think, I don't know, you know, are they our first A tier or are, we still, or are they top of the B? What are we feeling? I, yeah, that's tough. I think they're bottom of A tier. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay i'm very much I'm, I'm very much okay with that right on uh and that's gonna bring us to a character that i just don't know how to how to nail this character down this huntress i it's so tough for me because i've seen her damage be phenomenal and i've also seen her die to a swift breeze so it's pretty tough her range is lacking a little bit at 7.5 I do think mm -hmm. she has really good talents. The Glaive bouncing an additional three times makes her just erase all chickens. She can deal 50% additional damage to the, the initial target, which helps her kill towers faster. Or she can gain stealth and ambush, which I think is the best thing. It lets her kind of sneak up on people and get that opening attack to hit even harder. Um, she costs five, but huge AoE damage, and she's fast. Boy, is she fast. Yeah. Yes. But I don't I know how to feel I about her. I think she's the fastest character in the game, maybe. I think she might be. She's. I feel like she's lightning quick. And I think that's the problem. I think she's 
she might be one of, if not the highest skill capped tune in the game. Just because of the fact that she is so quick, she is so squishy, but she has so much damage. So if you can time her right, like I said, you can use her to push a Sneed or something like that. You know, if you can get her behind a tank, you know, she can eat and she can do damage. But the problem is she's going to walk faster than everything else in the game. So because of that alone, you have to position her properly to where you're going to be pushing up against the tank and she's going slow, you know, yeah. so that way she can't walk around that guy. And because of that alone, you know, it's a huge sky. It's a huge steel cap, you know, but the physical damage she does, it's phenomenal. It's crazy. I've on PVE going against them. You're going to hate her. She's going to eat so much of your unit. The computer's going to keep throwing her out like there's nobody's business. You yep. know, I think yep. at the one level where you start with three of them. Yeah, God, that thing held me up for a couple days, you know. And, but again, I think just because of the skill cap is so high on her, you know, I, I think it's a B tier, even though it's, she's so good. She's so strong. Yeah, I'm, I'm good with B tier. It's, the, it's like you say, there's definitely a skill cap to her and encountering her when you're uh, facing against her. There's a skill cap to that too, to try get some timing down. Um, yeah, I'm going with B tier. What are we thinking? I'm thinking mm -hmm. she, she's pretty high on the B tier though. Yeah. I definitely, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking above right there. Right there, I think, is the good spot for her, you know, because I do think less of a niche play, more of, like, a skill cap play, you know, and as as you get better of her, you know, she can move up and she can enjoy that. But, you know, it takes a while. You know, it definitely took me a while to learn how to play her, and I still screw it up sometimes. Yeah, I agree. Like, if you want a little bit of a tip, like, you want your, your tanks or whatever your attacking force is, you want them to be about halfway to their target before you throw her out. And then you want to pray to God she doesn't get intercepted by like a safe pilot by the enemy <laughs> or some well planes. Oh yes, I've seen that happen many of times. Oh, I've been so <laughs> mad, especially when that happens in PvP. That's a problem. It's a problem. Just like this next guy, who I've tried to make this guy work. I really have. Uh, the Mountaineer, the bear is nice and tanky. I like the men pet. I haven't even actually looked at the others. When a bear or Mountaineer dies, the other gains bloodlust. I don't really care. Heal up to three additional nearby beasts. I don't really care about that either. Actually, yeah, I thought that'd be better. And then Bear Gains Taunt. I'm not super in love with his uh, his talents here. He's easy to snipe out. He does have some good range, 8.5. I think 9 is the highest from the, the troll uh, spear guy. Yeah. Um, but he costs 6, man. So yeah, he, he costs 6, so he... You gotta run him as a tank because of that fact, you know, that yeah. the, he's such a high. It is two units, you know, it's a tank unit, AoE unit. He does heal, you know, and the success I have had with him is I actually run him in a hogger cycle deck with all beasts. Him, shaman, hogger cycle, because then they could heal. It's almost not like a hogger cycle, you're almost running like a hogger tank, a hogger Tyrion. Or Hogger um, Bloodthorn, you know, or the, the the hoof, I'm sorry, the other hoof gentleman from the Horde. Turn. You know, and yeah, and that's kind of, but again, you know, it's like a Holy Nova, that's him. And even in that deck, he's not the star of the deck. You know, he's, he's there, he does good things, you know, he makes the deck run. But, I mean, it's, like you said, it's just, it's, it's a very, it's a more niche use than I think maybe Arcane Blast even. Because yes. I think Arcane is, is like, okay, that makes sense in this deck. Him, you almost have to build a crafted deck around the guy, you know? So I almost, is he is he our first D tier, perhaps? Yep, he's our first D tier. I don't know if he'll be our last for the Alliance. The Alliance is, is this big swing, man. The, the yeah. S tiers are like, yo, use this everywhere. And the D tiers, like you said, is very hard to find a way. Mm -hmm. All right, then we got people that I'm not even sure if they should be Alliance characters. The Defias <laughs> Bandits. Uh, interesting to put them on there. These are the cheapest units in the game <clears throat> at one. Um, they're sneaky. So they come out in stealth. You can get them poison. You can make it so that they earn an extra two gold when they open a chest. Or you can have it so on death stun the target when they die. They'll throw out a stun. These guys, I thought nothing of them at first. Because when you're up against them, they're so easy to handle, right? But if you're using them in PvP, or if you're using them to... Just kind of hold your base down with that opening cheap shot they do with that stun and costing one they have been a lifesaver when i'm pushing dungeons which is a huge part of maxing out your deck so 
I'm interested to see your take on the Defias Bandits. I agree, you know, like they're 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 a very interesting unit. You know, like I said, the the, the cheap shot on spawn is great because you get your tower shooting at them. There's two of them. They pop out. You know, they're gonna hold they hold your base down. And then again, you know, to to grab a chest for you, I think I think the chest park is my favorite yep. because again, as you're pushing and you're not spawning units at your base anymore, you know, let's say you've gotten a further up point closer to to the hit, to where you're going in PVE, you know, they're phenomenal to throw back at your base and just grab that, so you don't have to waste a cobalt back there, you know, yep. to, to grab that chest. And then, then at that point, you know, they're 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 making a decent amount of money for you, you know, and eventually they work their way up and. So, so yeah, again, it's something I did. I slept on them, and then kind of I was like, "Oh, hang on a minute," you know. And I get, I, I think that's the joys of the sur the surges as well in this game. You know, yep. it kind of it lets you play with different units, and that's something you kind of discovered. You know, and uh, I agree. I think they're, I think they're a sneaky B tier. I was gonna give them A. A. I, I love that they cost one. They have saved do me it. so many times. Let's do it. Let's, yeah. I like it. that. That's how sneaky they are, boys. Yeah. They went into my pocket and they came out the other side. <laughs> they came at us at A tier. Uh, okay, moving on to the Griffin. I've seen so many other content creators using this Griffin, and for the life of me, I don't get it. The <laughs> range is so bad that you yeah. almost want to put Mighty Throw, but you don't because you really like that Odin's Fury or that yeah. airdrop, like. I can't. I, I don't get it. <laughs> I I I'm a Griffin enjoyer. Let me put it that way. Okay. I it's flying. It's a two cost. It almost similar to to what we're talking about the cheap shot. You know, it's like it's a great unit that's strong. It's weak as all get out. I mean, but this thing is it can survive an arcane blast. You know, mm. you know. There's another spell that can one shot it for sure. We'll talk about it in a minute. But um, but yeah, you know, it it's not the um, but again, you know, like again, I think it, people just enjoy it because it's cheap. It's flying. Not everything targets flying in this game, mm -hmm. so there is an advantage to it because of that. But they're not the get all be all, you know, greatest unit in the game by any stretch of the imagination. You know, I don't think they deserve C tier, but I don't think they deserve high B either. Right. It's a good. It's a good plug and play if you're early on and you're kind of like, man, I don't really know what to put in my deck. You know. It, it's an easy flyer you can just throw in any deck to to buy you some time or throw in a level you like, oh i need flying for this level easy just to go to throw her in there true and because she costs two you can always put her with uh charga charlga 100 <laughs> percent. there you go that's it so and anything so, to help that deck get better exactly. more no she needs it so what do you think you're thinking high c is that where we're at uh yeah i'm, I'm okay with top of c I think, yeah, I think top of C is okay. Okay. And then our final alliance member here. Uh, again, alliance. kind of yeah, a weird, weird one. But... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're in Westfall, so I guess they count. We got the, the Harvest Golem. I have no experience with the Golem except facing it. Uh, let's read his talents real quick. So on death, spawn four angry chickens. That's cool. On death, stun nearby enemies for three seconds. That's a long time. If, if he's leading the charge, he's got units behind him that are immediately going to kill those stun units. That's cool. And on death, apply a heal over time effect to nearby allies. Uh, I, I don't know if I, I don't know if I can make use of that bountiful. Harvest. And that's the thing you got to mention too. This character does die once and then come yes. back to life. I believe at half health. Correct. Yeah. So hardy melee automation with a trick up its sleeve. After its first death, it will shock itself back to life. I think it's actually 100% life. Oh, it just dies so fast. I think it's half health, I guess. Yeah, yeah. maybe. And that, that's the problem with this character. It just gets eaten alive by anything. I've never I've never lost a 1v1 with this thing. Yeah. You know, maybe there's some units that can die to it, but I've never seen it happen. So, you know, it's it's a fun gimmicky thing, I think, for sure, with the cheat death or the comeback after death, you know, and... And all of its talents base around its dying. So obviously it's just meant to die. And it dies. It does a really good job. It does a really of good job dying. Uh, so what do you think about it? Because if it was a two cost, I'd be like, okay, it's a nice little distraction. But at three cost, it kind of starts becoming a burden. I'm actually comfortable and putting it in D with our... Uh, I think here. it dies in D. I think it makes yeah. perfect sense to go there. And I, I think the Mountaineer edges it out still. A hundred percent. 
all right guys well that's it for the uh the alliance tier list let me know what you're thinking about this let us know if you think we nailed it or if we completely missed the mark on based on your experience i think we're gonna have some debate with this uh this griffin raider right here and maybe maybe the huntress uh, and and yeah. maybe we got some diehard dwarven fans, but I'm sorry. Let's be it's honest, dwarven. man. The harvest golem, they, this, the people are going to be most riled up about that. Now, that's what I can't wait to see. What is shittier than the harvest golem? Tell us, please. Oh, I have some ideas. <laughs> wait, wait, hang on. I got some come ideas. To the next one for that one. You got to come to the next one to find out. <laughs> that's right, guys. All right, so this was going to be it for today. Tomorrow, you're going to be seeing us do this exact same getup uh, for Horde. Let's go. That's it for the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Stay happy, healthy, have fun, and I'll see you in the next one.